Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today we are at the Cathedral Shrine of the Virgin of Guadalupe in downtown Dallas. With me is Christopher Johnson. He's the organist here. Chris, how long have you been playing here? I've been playing here for between four and five years. Okay, so you're pretty familiar with this instrument. This instrument is on the tour of the 2019 OHS convention here, happening here in Dallas this July, and this is probably the oldest organ that they're going to see, don't you think? What, what year was this? This instrument was built in 1871 wow. for a Presbyterian church up in New Jersey. Oh, I yes. See. So it wasn't even in Dallas. Anymore. It was not properly in Dallas, but it was brought down here in 1901, donated by the Archbishop of Boston. Oh, interesting. Yes. All right, so uh, yeah, originally it was a uh, hook organ? Uh, Reuben Midmer and okay. Sons. So we, now I had been told hook, but we know that Mi Reuben hook, Midmer yes. had something to do with it. Yes. Because, tell me about that Now, story. Hook and Hastings are the ones that dismantled it and brought it down oh, okay, so to why. Dallas, right at the turn of the century. Okay, but then we know it was a, a Reuben Midmer, and it has since been rebuilt by Roy Redman. It has, uh, and he's done an excellent job. We've seen one of his newer organs, and now we're actually seeing a rebuild job mm -hmm. of his, and he was the one that discovered that the Midmer was the one he found his name inside the Winchester. I do I, believe so, that's yes. That's what, uh, what I heard, so a uh, lovely old instrument in this beautiful church, so uh, I'd like to hear a little bit of it. Okay. Um, let me just start, let me hear what's on the grate on the bottom manual. Here. Well, uh, we'll just start with a straightforward principal chorus uh, with the mixture. And that's a pretty brilliant mixture for, for this size organ, but it's, it, it helps it get some clarity in there. I want to hear just the eight foot by side. Is any of the facade speaking? The Can facade is speaking. Okay, good. As a matter so of fact, the facade is split between the, uh, the pedal uh, eight foot and the uh, great uh, tenore okay. uh, 16 foot. Right? I see. Yeah, I want to hear just the eight foot in here, how because that's always a good idea it, of what an organ is It is, supposed it to is do. the meat and potatoes, and, and it is just great. lovely singing principle in the mm -hmm. room, but it's not too heavy for uh, with that big Victorian sound we're used to hearing. It's right. actually pretty clear and speaking. Yes. All right, good. What else do we have besides that, after that principle? Course? We have an eight-foot uh, stopped flute, uh, and, and it's pretty big uh, for, uh, for, the, for the instrument. Point out you pull two knobs there. It so is a split rank. Split, so you do have to pull bass and treble. That's right. If you want it to speak. That's right. The there, there's compass. a few split ranks on the instrument. Okay. What else in the grate is split? Um, let's see anything? Else. Actually, nothing else okay, on so the grate itself. Uh, just in the swap. Well, what's what's a useful uh, application of the split stop flute on the grate? The split stop flute on the grate is is nice because sometimes uh, if you just want a little more oomph down mm. at the bass. Uh, you can you can get that with with just pulling the bass right. Helps you and fill out a little. Yes, oh, yes, okay. it does. It does. Okay. What do we go from there? Well, uh, the flute harmonique is is really beautiful. It is very lovely flute there. It's quite quite clear and singing. Very nice. Yes, I uh, love using it as a solo uh, whenever I'm you know, playing in. Uh, at communion time, for, for example. Sure. Um, oh, there's the strings. But that sounds really lovely in the low register, too. Oh, yeah, no. There's that. It's beautiful. Um, the, the trumpet's quite brilliant. Uh, it's almost uh, uh, worthy of being its own solo uh, rank. Um, you know, you can do you know, your, your typical bridal entrance. Or treat it as a chorus. bright but it's not super loud for a great it is not how does uh, that can you add that to the principal chorus and get a decent yeah uh, so punch to it? so when we uh, we, have, when we have the principal chorus and uh, you know the plenum it, it's very balanced yeah it does add a lot yeah. of uh, power to it without a lot of volume it's just that brightness and that clarity yes yes 
Is that yes. the full grate then? Uh, well, we do have a, a, a four-foot clarion okay. that I, I use very rarely because it tends to split people's hair. <laughs> Acoustic, of course, is the, the best yeah, uh, rank on the instrument. Um, now, is that clarion completely independent? It is. From the eight, so you do have two ranks of reeds in the yes. grate. Yeah, so I yes. can see how that adds a lot of sound to, to open that up. Yes. then over here on the swell? The swell is uh, located above the whole instrument. Okay. So right here, uh, where I me mean, as an organist, when I sit here, it's very difficult for me to gather mm -hmm. what the balance is out there. But it is a beautiful swelled vision, uh, you know, starting with strings, uh, you know. then bring on the eight foot flute and it just fills out and getting into that romantic eight foot together. stops do we have there? Now what we have here is uh, we have a split rank of the uh, eight foot flute. Okay. Uh, it stops right there at tenor C. Um, and we have the open diapason. Uh, let me hear just the open diapason. Uh, the open diapason, sure. It's a lovely singing sound, but it does feel pretty distant up there from where we're sitting. I'm sure out there 
it, it carries quite well. It, it, it does. It's a lovely sound, but it feels a little anemic. But it, it feels very anemic. It's, anemic is the right word. But for I can right tell here. it is actually a, a very strong sound there. So you, you blend that with your strings. And the flute there is split, just like it is on the grapes. Mm -hmm. Are there any other split stops on the swell? Now, the 16-foot Borden is split. Okay. And that is especially handy because sometimes, uh, you know, the two 16-foot uh, flues in the pedal is not enough. And so mm -hmm. I'll couple the, the base rank, uh, the base portion of the board and so it just gives you down, extra 16 and extra 16 without down. muddying the upper part okay That's exactly right sense. yes so those are your split ranks right. well, then what do we have from there uh well we have a beautiful uh swell four foot flute yeah. how does that sound with the eight foot flute uh, So we got the, the eight foot, then we have the four foot, the flute, and the two foot, okay. and then Gina. the one and one third. Oh, one and one third. So that's all flute. That's all stuff. flute. So based. Let's hear what that sounds yeah. like. So together. Um, or if you want to go into uh, uh, skip pitch registration, you know. Mm -hmm. The principles, uh, you, you have an eight foot uh, open diapason that we've already spoken mm -hmm. about, and then you have the four foot uh, principle, uh, together with your uh, two foot flute is, uh, is a nice little. Uh, and actually the, uh, the open diapason does not continue all the way down to uh, the bottom end so of the manual. So that's an instance where you... turn on the eight-foot flute to make it speak all the way down. So with, down there, you probably can't tell when you've got the chorus on. That's correct. Anyway, so that's all the upper work is doing all the work at that point. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. nice. And then do we have reeds in this one? Uh, we do. We have okay. uh, a bassoon and a uh, au bois. Uh, they're, they're, they're nice. A little growl. energy in those stops. I like it. So let's hear the whole swell then. Very nice. And we have a number of, of couplers and other things that are... We, we uh, do. Accessories here. Tell me what sure. these other knobs do. Well, we have uh, your, your swell to great coupler. Uh, and, that's, and that's on the manual through piston here. That's right. Okay. Uh, and then you have a, a great to pedal and your swell to pedal. Um, when you have the keyboards coupled together, both keyboards play. Anytime you have kids up here, you know, they always love seeing it's that because it's like there's a little phantom playing up here <laughs> also. Um, what else do we have? And then we do have a tremulant on the swell? We do have a tremulant on the swell. Okay. Uh, it's it's uh, fairly gentle.
the lighter colored stops are your pedal division. Oh, okay. So it's, it's split between it's the left and the right. Uh, we have your uh, double open. And we have a 16 foot view alone. Very gentle sound there. Yes. Nice to have the soft end allowed. It gives a little bit of relief to the ear, especially you know when you want to bring it down to absolutely nothing. Yeah, not too much. It's nice. Yeah. Um, and then together, uh, we also have a 16-foot trombone. Uh, mm -hmm. It definitely has some, some grit to it. And then a flute. The flute. So we have eight foot flute, then the bow. So I assume all the pedal is in the back on the lower level. It sounds like it's coming from here at ear level for us. So yes, like that is correct. Builds in the room very nice. The, the, the manuals obviously are not AGO standard, dating from much earlier than that came along. How is it like to play on these keys with a little different spacing and depth? It is, uh, it's normal for me now. I yeah. play six masses a weekend. <laughs> so when I go to an AGO standard instrument, that's actually uh, That's quite different. a riot because all of a sudden I have a concave and radiating pedal board and the keys are spaced differently and the, the, the touch is different. And you only have, you have 28 pedals? Uh, yes. It, it, and they're all straight, so yeah, it's a little bit different, the spacing. That's does right. It, does it still fall under C, fall under C pretty uh, much? Yes, okay, yes it does. So they're centered about the same place, you just have a little different spacing for yes. to get used to. I see four toe spoons down here. What do these yes, do? Yes, uh, these are ventils. Uh, oh. And uh, we do have them hooked up. Uh, the right one brings out Nice. A uh, plenum. Uh, cutting edge technology for oh, sir, yeah. uh, 1871, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I believe the one to the left of it is just the trumpet. Okay. Just a quick. Yep. If you need to bring it on in the last verse of a hymn, you can just kick that. And That's right. Off it goes. And then there's a Easy for the swell. fairly full swell. And it does turn them back off on it. Um, now, if you. The trumpet one just brings on the trumpet. There's no way to reverse backwards to a piano like. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Um, I believe it does turn off. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, okay. In addition to turning on. Yeah, so that's interesting. We'll have it's, to see how that works in there because that's it's curious. Usually they can only do one thing, so to have it pull both is, is uh, a neat thing. This is all mechanical stop action. You pull, you can feel that, that you slider can, moving. You can so. feel it, and some of them will fight you. Some of them, <laughs> you're wondering if it's still connected back there. <laughs> Well, this is a, a, I mean, a great instrument for this church, and it's been restored, much as the church itself has been undergoing a lot of restoration, I know, to keep it looking as fantastic as it does. What, you said you play six masses a week here, so you must have a lot of music going on, a lot of different kinds of music, I assume? Lots of different kinds of music. Uh, we're, we're in downtown Dallas. I'm sure a lot of people who have been to Dallas have seen this church, even if they've never been in, just because it's so visible here on the edge of town. Um, what, what kind of music happens here, and what kind of, what's the worship like? Well, um, we have uh, three English masses and three Spanish masses oh. that I play for. Uh, there are two masses I don't play for, so there, there's a lot going on oh, here on the weekends. Um, the English masses uh, are fairly elevated. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Spanish masses uh, draw a lot of their music from the uh, uh, Mexican uh, mestizo traditions. Um, so you're going to see, uh, uh, you know, to, to a common ear, it sounds like a lot of mariachi music. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, that presents some challenges because as an organist, you know, mm -hmm. I, I need to uh, minister not only to the Anglo population, but also to the Hispanic population we have sure. here. So um, uh, one of the great things I just absolutely love about my job is is doing that and, and trying to do it well on the instrument and to you know pay tribute and homage to their uh, cultural styles See. yeah and the, this organ satisfies the, your ability to do that you have what you need here or is it a challenge to make it work for to fit in those lines it is 
its own challenge because you're kind of going into uncharted territory, you know, and I don't believe Gleason covered this. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Well, perhaps you can write a book when you're done and you figured it out. Uh, Who how knows? To, how to, but it's good to see you're taking this, you know, uh, a technology from a different era and culture and bringing it into the culture and era that we have today and that's making, right. making music live here in this cathedral. So that's fantastic. <laughs> To get into the case, there are doors on either side of the console. As we step in, the first thing we see are the pedal chests that are perpendicular to the console off on the side. Stepping in, there's the large regulator right in front of us. And we see the stop action coming off of the console. a large double fold regulator here. Stop action running up to the swell. Now this is how the toe spoons activate the stops. They rotate these bars that literally push the controls directly connected to the draw knobs. There's the key action coming up off the grate. You see the bottom of the grate chest right above us. Now this is looking back at the pedal action. There are chests that are perpendicular and there are chests that are parallel to the console. So the action has to go left to right and it also has to come off the action towards the three chests that are perpendicular, running sideways along the side of the case. You can see the pedal pipes along the back chests there. These are the squares for the stop action that transfer the action up to the swell. And then going in the other side, we see the other half of the pedal chest on this right side of the console. This is looking under at the stops on the great side. This is the toe spoon action, moving this bar. There's two of them on either side of the console. This one just does the same thing, but it pushes right at the slider part of the draw knob action. Now we've climbed up the ladder and I'm looking down at the grate pipes. There's the walk board, the key action going up to the swell. Stepping on up to the swell walkboard, and we can see over the top of the case, there's a rose window behind the organ. Looking out into the nave, and there are the facade pipes, where those can be tuned there. They're only painted on the front. And looking down at the pedal stops on the side of the case. open up the swell. There's a door here on the side, and we can see inside the very compact and tightly packed swell. Everything is very well lit inside this organ. And there are reeds along the back, and you can access those from behind. Everything else has to be tuned from right here. The swell shades feature a tiny single door underneath as well as the vertical doors on the front and the action opens that as it opens all of these doors. Here's how you access the back of the swell box. There's a walk board running along the back against the wall. Coming back down, now we're on the floor, we're going in the side of the case. We see our 
mouse patrol there, and uh, these are the pedal stops along the back. This is how you can tune the pedal read. So the facade of the organ has been altered from its original uh, composition. It was all gold, as far as we know, uh, just like we have on the, the central towers. Yes. But the main towers have all been uh, stenciled, That's as right. we might see on a, a Victorian instrument like this. That's right. Um, did the builder himself do all of this for us? Actually, it, it was his wife that oh, did it. Yes. Well, Redmond's wife. Yes. Isn't that interesting? Mrs. Redmond did all this for us? She did a fantastic she job. She did. It looked beautiful. They looked like they, they could have been in 1871. Uh, but I do see like some little motives have, that show up in some of the, the decorations of the church are here too. Little angels and the flowers and things. Yes, yes. Um, matter of fact, the red, I wonder if it's a, a little homage or a tribute to the former name of the cathedral, which was the Cathedral of the Sacred Heart. Oh, really? Yes. And so you can actually see little hearts in there as well and up here. Maybe the red is drawn from that. P very possible. Possibly we'll have to find out. We'll look around and see what else we can find. We'll have to ask her. <laughs> Chris, thank you for showing us this 1871 Reuben Midmer instrument here at the Cathedral Shrine of the Virgin of Guadalupe. It's in downtown Dallas and it's part of the 2019 Organ Historical Society Convention. It's going to be happening right in Dallas and surrounding area uh, this July. There's information down in the description if you're interested in attending the Organ Historical Society. Does the church have a website where they can find out more about the organ and the music here? Absolutely. Uh, check out cathedralguadalupe.org or you can check me out on uh, Facebook. Oh, excellent. Yeah, you can find him there. We'll put that down in the description as well. Uh, for streaming classical organ music 24 hours a day, remember you can visit our three streaming stations, OrganLive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. To find out more about the Organ Media Foundation and how you can help support videos like this one and help us make more, go to organ.media. I'm Brent Johnson. Talk to you next.